Hey everyone, the name is Rector and today's video is devoted to the champion archetypes, the extroverted feeling personality types. Have you ever felt that you were too emotional, that you were too headstrong, too passionate, that you cared too much, that you cared more than other people? The extroverted feeling type is a type that is illustrated by strong or outward expressions of emotions. The extroverted feeling type feels stronger than other people and feels that they feel stronger than other people. The extroverted feeling type struggles with this feeling that nobody cares but them. That I am the only person that sees how difficult and how hard this is. The extroverted feeling type listens to and sees other people's struggles. They see suffering in animals and in nature. They see things that are wrong and they see things that could be different. The extroverted feeling type also sees the positive. They see happiness. They see life. They see morals. They see people that do good things and people that are successful. So what you see is the extroverted feeling type is going to be expressing a lot of emotions externally towards other people. They're going to be happy for you. They're going to show passion about what they care about. They're going to talk passionately about something that they are very interested in. They're going to be a promoter of good things and a champion or activist against the bad things in society. Often what you see is extroverted feeling types, they care so much that they are often too invested in uh, political projects, community activism, and things that put them close to people and to the frailty of human condition and being alive and being a person or being an animal. So the extroverted feeling type tends to get very caught up in the injustices in the world and wants to make a difference, but also struggles to manage their emotional boundaries as they do. Often they are told they are too much and that they must contain themselves, relax, wait, Things will get better, just think about it for a second, just take it easy, just let it go. The extorted feeling type is the type that struggles the most with how to deal with logic. Logic is how we justify and explain what is going on in the world today, why people are poor, why society looks the way it does, why we emit pollution into the air, why we uh, throw away garbage on the streets, why people do the way things they do things. The introverted thinking archetype represents the scientist, the one that explains natural phenomena. These are the rules behind how things work and we cannot get upset with people. The problem is with the rules. The extroverted feeling type is the person that fights against problems and issues head on. They say, no, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't put things out in the street. No, you shouldn't hurt people. No, you shouldn't do what you do. So the extorted feeling type tends to come at things emotionally and personally, what we should and what we should not do. What you'll see is the champion archetypes, the extorted feeling archetypes care about morality. They emit and they express morality. They have a sense of morality. They have stronger morals than other people. They get upset and they express how they want society to be, how they want people to act. They get disappointed in other people when other people don't live up to these expectations, when other people fail them or break or hurt other people. They get uh, angry when things aren't the way they should be. And they get, of course, happy when things are the way they should be. So extroverted feeling types struggle with rationalization. Rationalization, the process in which we make peace with and say how the world is and how it should work. The extroverted feeling type can feel that while things may function logically and while there might be good reasons for things, we should still not do them. While there might be good reasons for the system to be the way it is, it should still not be that way. We should still not do these things. We should still, as individuals, choose to live differently. So the extroverted feeling type is not concerned with the way logic operates and how the world logically should be, but by the way the world could be or should be if we all abided by a basic level of human decency. What you see when Carl Jung describes extroverted feeling types is a person that has a strong idea on all manners of social issue. That is, how do we dress? How do we talk to each other? What do we say and what do we not say? How do we treat one another? What level of respect do we deserve? How should we be towards one another? 
what should we do on social matters? What should we say? What should we wear? How should we act? What, how should we take care of the planet? How should we take care of ourselves and those that are worst off in society? The extroverted feeling type grows up feeling that they are alone in caring so much and that they are that they have to fight and that they have to be and express and speak out or nothing will happen. The extroverted feeling type fears that if they don't say anything, things will become normal and things won't change. Poor will keep being poor, suffering people will keep suffering, bad things will keep being bad. But often what the extroverted feeling type also feels is I have to guard and protect my emotions. What if I jump in and get disappointed? What if I... Uh, get involved and I see so many things. Yeah, I don't want to see these things. So often what the extroverted feeling type does is they blind themselves to these matters. They don't want to read about it. They don't want to, don't want to hear about it. They don't want to deal with it. When the extroverted feeling type is confronted with injustice, it can be that they don't want to see it or they want to tune out of it to protect their own feelings and emotions. The fear is, of course, what if I get hurt or what if I do something and nothing gets better? What if uh, I get involved and get too involved? And what if uh, I fail? So this is something that confronts our ability to make peace with the way the world is or our ability to deal with things that are wrong or our ability to speak out against injustice in the world. Often uh, what can keep an extroverted feeling type from expressing themselves is a feeling that nobody will listen, nobody will care if I speak out. Or it can be that uh, no matter how much I speak out, things will always be bad, so there's no point at all. These are all blockers that we have to get rid of and deal with and find a way to handle. Because there is a natural and important part of this. We need to listen to our emotions and we need to remind ourselves about how we really feel about our situation. We need to let ourselves have opinions and to let ourselves care. We cannot numb ourselves to emotions even if we would want to. And yeah, the champion is the person that will first say, I wish I could shut off my emotions. The extroverted feeling type wishes they could shut off their emotions, but they cannot. They are repeatedly told to by society and by their friends and family. Shut off your emotions. Don't care so much. Don't let it get to your head. Don't let it take over. Don't let it, don't care, don't get too invested in it. The extroverted feeling type keeps hearing these things, but it's like they can't understand it because it's like another language. How do you not care? How do you shut off? How do you not see that this is bad? How do you not see that this is an issue? Why don't you want to talk about it? Often the extroverted feeling type wants to talk about it, wants to make a deal out of it, wants to change it, wants to fix it. But when other people do not want to communicate, when other people don't want to talk about it, don't want to respond to it and tell them to shut up or tell them to be silent, that's a very difficult thing. You're tempted to either shout louder and to get even more irrational about it or to give up and to shut down and to turn off. And you don't know what to do and you don't know what to, how to deal with these matters. These matters are some of the most complicated. What if, if I keep on pushing, I will push my friends and family members away from me? But at the same time, in history, there was this idea of uh, the woman who was too emotional, the woman who cared too much. In the past, there used to be a psychological diagnosis for hysteric women. A lot of these women were just women that were never listened to. Because we did not listen to them, they repeatedly felt their emotions getting more and more intense. They felt they had to raise their voice higher to be heard, but no matter how much they raised their voice, people did not hear them. So what you did is you got this group of people who were diagnosed as hyster hysteric because their expressions and their emotions were seen as unnatural. And often when we meet extroverted feeling types, we tend to see these emotions as unnatural. When they come and they talk and they seem so passionate and happy, we assume it must be fake. We assume it cannot be real. And this is, of course, our personal bias. Of course, it can be real to them. While you might show emotions differently, they might also show emotions in another way. They might process emotions outwardly while you might want to process them inwardly. 
You may want to choose to respond to things logically or rationally, while other people may choose to focus on things emotionally. And what we might recognize is we have emotions for a reason. There is a biological purpose to emotions and to feelings. But what we have to do is we have to learn to manage them appropriately. Of course, there is an issue of translation, translating our feelings to other people, to logical people who prefer to approach things systematically. We might need to recognize that no matter how much I'm ye gonna yell at this point, this person is not gonna listen. And then we need to focus and channel our emotions into something else. Instead of screaming at the people who don't listen, perhaps we need to talk to and find the people who do. Often what you need to do is you need to form alliances with people that share your values and that care about similar things. Often what you need to do is find projects, art or pursuits or hobbies or some kind of project that will help you tune into your emotions and channel them proactively into a positive thing. Emotions, just as logic, has to be put into something, or it just washes all over us, and then you don't have any control over it. Your first step is gaining control over your emotions. No, even before then, your first step is to understanding and identifying your emotions. So your first step is identifying, am I angry? Am I upset? Am I sad? A lot of the time, we refuse to label our emotions. We are upset, but we say, no, I'm not upset! Even though that's obviously contradictory. So the first thing we need to do is label our emotions and understand them. Yeah, I am upset. Sometimes we don't want to take ownership of our emotions. We don't want to admit that we are upset. Because we feel it is that we shouldn't be upset. So we want to pretend it is something else. But deception is not a way to understanding. The first step is recognizing and taking ownership. Then the third step is taking control. I am feeling this way and I can choose what I do with these feelings. I am upset, so I am going to do this. I am sad, so I am going to do this. Mindfully engaging in your emotions and thinking about how you're feeling, identifying strategies that can help you put out and express your emotions in a positive way, in a constructive way rather than a destructive way. Actively taking ownership and saying, this is how I feel, and you might feel differently, but this is how I feel. I feel this way, I process this way, I'm going through this. You might process something different, but this is what I'm processing. And this is what I'm responsible for, and this is what I care about. With these strategies, I hope you will go from being the hysteric to being the champion, to being the person that can truly fight and make a difference in the world, can truly speak out, can truly be the person that says something when other people stand silent, to truly becoming the person that can take emotional maturity and responsibility while other people put their head under the sand and ignore or refuse to deal with real problems in a real world. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, leave a like, share and subscribe. And let me know your struggles being a champion, what you go through, what your biggest issue is and how you deal with your emotions. What are the best strategies? What are the worst ones you've ever done? Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.